And now, Freelance Heroism presents Bard Company. Hey everybody, welcome to Freelance Heroism. My name is Dees. And I'm Rachel. And before we even get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone out there who donated to the Patreon, in particular those who donate at the producer tier. Mm -hmm. Rachel. Yes. Would you like to let us know who they are? I would love to. We want to say thank you to Duncan, Nate, Breakmeister, Rebecca, and Chris Sones. Thank you so much, everyone. You help us make a better show for everyone, <laughs> and we couldn't do it without you. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. And also, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. Uh, it's cold here, and it just uh, snowed. Snowing, huh? Yeah. Pretty thick. Well, it snowed. Hey, oh, uh, sorry, sorry, that was rude. It snowed Friday and Saturday, uh, so I've been shoveling out of snow, and then today I went out and I cleared the snow off my car, so that way I don't have to do it tomorrow morning before I go to work. You think it won't snow during the night? I don't think so. I don't think it's supposed to snow again. You should just. Leave your car running all night so that the warmth will melt the <laughs> snow up. Right? And then when you then when you wake up in the morning, it'll just be like an ice sheet underneath <laughs> your car that has frozen. Oh no. Yeah. So your car will look like a mini. It'll have like a little base. <laughs> There's actually a law here that uh when it snows you have to clear the snow off the top of your car. Um, yeah. which was something I'd never considered before I moved here. But the reason for that is that when you're driving It'll come off. If like a big chunk of snow and ice like flies off the top of your car and then like hits the windshield of the car behind you, you could obviously cause an accident. Someone could get hurt. So yeah. there's like an actual law that you have to clear off the roof of your car before you drive it around. No roof car snow. Right. Gotcha. I will remember that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Oh, uh, <laughs> speaking of holiday stuff. Uh-huh. Right, and snow and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I got myself a little early present because you remember me talking about my headphones, right? And how they'd hurt my ears? Yes. So we, oh, at Freelance Heroism and at Crit Ribbit, we use a lot of headphones. <laughs> we use them <laughs> all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you've ever worn a pair of headphones for a long time and the, the pads kind of squish down on your ears, especially if you wear glasses, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. They'll kind of pin the top of your ears down and they'll hurt really bad, especially for long periods. But I went to this place called Wicked Cushions and I got these new ear pads and I installed them on my Audio Technica headphones. Mm -hmm. They fit perfect and they surround my entire ear now. And so there's no more of that pain. Oh, it feels amazing. They yeah. were like about 20 bucks and they were so good. And mm -hmm. I, I want to clarify, I'm not sponsored by them, but I wish that we were. <laughs> because then I, I imagine a sponsorship comes with free headphones mm -hmm. or discounts or whatever. If you if you use headphones a lot, if you're a gamer, if you D and D over the uh, over the internet, mm -hmm. if you just like listening to music or whatever, you should definitely definitely get these headphone covers. They're awesome, and they're like they're not like they don't go on top. You like rip the old ones off and put the new ones on. Oh, okay. They are great. Nice. I sent you that picture with the, the thin and then the big. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, just get the wicked cushions. Trust me. Go on Facebook <laughs> or Instagram or whatever and type in forward slash wicked cushions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to, I, I, I messaged them and told them I was going to give them a shout out. And we are not <laughs> sponsored by them. But right. they were like, oh, cool. Thanks. And I'm like, they don't care. But <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. Uh, but I do, I do really like these and, and, for sure should yeah thanks so I'll, I'll put a link in in the show notes as well okay sounds good cool. well i'm glad your ears are feeling better they are although now you are all boogery right well look the uh, wicked cushions can't do anything for my nose holes N no <laughs> what are you gonna do, about what are you gonna do right sure. uh I don't know if it's like that flu or like just a general griminess or just a, a coming back to Georgia from Maine. So now I've got all the the tree spunk in the Ew. air, all in the air. And but it's got my nose like every day when I wake up for like a couple hours, mm -hmm. my head is just congested. Ugh. 
Yeah, so it's just it's really it's really unpleasant. I, I was I was telling you earlier, I feel like my head is a booger balloon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so it's so unpleasant. It's like I was snorting Jello pudding. Yeah, gross. Terrible. Yeah. It is um because it's so cold here. The air is really dry, and like the inside of my nose hurts because of just how <laughs> dry the air is. I'm gonna like uh get my humidifier set up it's this also, evening, I think. It's also because you do lines of bird seed. <laughs> bird seed? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about a duck. Like Donald Duck just, you know? Uh-huh. Old rock and roll Donald. <laughs> the VH1 behind the music of Donald Duck snorting bird seed off a mirror. Oh my god. Is that too visually striking? That's okay. interesting. Uh, visual. <laughs> He's got tattoos <laughs> on his feathers. Ah, <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I just it's this. Uh, people are saying that it's like the flu because people wear masks for so long and whatever. I never get sick, and I don't feel sick myself. Uh-huh. Like I don't like I don't feel like like when you feel sick and your body's like Ugh, right. But I do feel like the symptom of boogers in my head yeah. are well represented. Well, do you have that? Do you have head boogers lately? Um all uh this past week I've been I've been sick. I think I had that flu that was going around because a lot of people at my work were out sick and then when they felt mostly better they came back into work. And they just all coughed in a jar and shared. <laughs> So I just I coughed in this jar here. Huff it. <laughs> I feel better this weekend, but I was out uh for quite a few days at work. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel really slacking over there at the library. No. <laughs> so I, I just I don't know. If you're out there and you're starting to feel a little, you know, sinusy or whatever, mm-hmm. the good sign the good news is that it generally wears off after a couple hours, but um I've also seen a lot of people getting sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, COVID has an up spike again. Yeah. Fucking was it the the RSV or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. So they said that one's on the down, uh, going down. But the flu and 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 COVID are up. So just be careful. Try to wear a mask if you can. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to get your family sick on the holidays. Yeah. During the winter, everyone's indoorsy. So you mm-hmm. know, just be careful out there, guys. We don't we don't want any of our listeners to get sick. Yeah. You know, head boogers are, are the best case scenario. <laughs> Which is a weird thing to say. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, do you want to go to this week's episode? I desperately want to go to this week's episode. Okay. This is my favorite one. I love it so much. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well. I was, I've been sitting around waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it's finally here. And you can oh finally... God. Listen to Bard but, Company episode oh. <laughs> twenty eight, always on my mind. Interesting. <laughs> you sounded so surprised. <laughs> this is exactly the one I was talking about. Was it? What I happens, don't know. What happens in this episode? I, some gaming <laughs> and a guy. Are you sure we get to gaming in a Bard Company episode? I think a guy goes, "Hey, man." There's gonna be there's gonna be fighting, and I go, oh no! And then we roll <laughs> dice to see some numbers, and my numbers are some of them are pretty good, uh-huh. some of them are not great, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then uh, somebody goes, hey monster, eat <laughs> this and don't be alive anymore, uh-huh. and then he dies, and then we we all high five mm-hmm. and learn a, 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 a we learn about friendship. Cool. Okay. That pretty close. <laughs> we'll see. I knew it. I was waiting for this one. Okay. Rachel. Yes. Rachel of House Daconia. <laughs> Where we leave off, yo. Um. Well, you should all be level four. We are. Okay. Sorta. Does one of your character sheets have a level four Renazmir on it? No. Oh, okay. It has a level one, level three. So, yes. 
Okay. But um, our truths are both the same. <laughs> so uh, last game, you guys had a little bit of downtime. You had uh, the game before you had rescued Gundren, who, or I guess purchased him back from a bugbear and a, uh, a drow woman that was trying to take him. That check's going to bounce, by the way, just let you know that. <laughs> Um, and so you guys had gone back to Fandelver for a little bit of rest. Um, it was during that time that Virian and Renazmir disappeared for about a day, day and a half. Um, Varys, you were getting drunk, so. Woo! Get drunk! <laughs> you didn't go with the. No, I was helping my... NASCAR burn Confederate flags. <laughs> refresh my memory on what happened during that event. Which event? The one where we were gone. I, I, well, I was going to have. I fell under the table. I got up. I drank more beer. <laughs> uh, well, I was going to have um, when Virian and Renazmir come back to find Varys, because you guys still have to go to uh, Wave Echo Cave, um, as Gundren, who is still suffering from his wounds, has asked you guys to go there, as that is um, where Black Spider is interested in. Um, and that's also where Gundren's two brothers are, and he hasn't heard from them lately, and he's very worried about them. Okay. Does this imply that all dwarves are related now, too? No, he yes. just has two brothers. He has dwarves his two brothers. It's Gundrum, Goblins are all related. Gundrum Wing, and Gundrum <laughs> Wing Zero. <laughs> Gundrum Wing Zero custom. <laughs> yeah, and, and then Wu Fei Chang is his other brother. <laughs> Who was my dude? Nice. I was always so, a heavy arms fan. <laughs> uh, Renazmir and Varian, you guys go back to Fandolin. Um, Mel is busy. Uh, oh, he's hanging out with his his groupie again. I guess he's he's sitting on a mountaintop contemplating metal. <laughs> He's taking a vow of growly. Yes. Of growlance. <laughs> um, so Varys, you know you know that Mel's been busy. You know that Renazmir and Varian disappeared for about a day and a half. Um, also during that time, uh, Sister Garely had gone with them. Uh, but oh. they're all back now. Uh, you guys can find Varys at the bar. Face down. <laughs> Always Pass face up. down. Whoa. <laughs> There's no potions involved. <laughs> face down. Wake up, up. Wake up. Wake up. Well, okay. Time to administer the medicine. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. Yeah, I figured that would do it. <sighs> you guys look cheaper. I have no recollection of the events of the last game. That's what I'm you said literally... last time you went to the Vegas. <laughs> I literally feel like a blackout drunk. I'm like, like in real life. Uh, you said something about Garely. I'm like, oh yeah, she went with us. Where uh -huh. did we go? I don't know. Wait for someone to give us a clue. Like, I just totally blanked. I've well, I was going to have the two of you explain to Varys where you You're going to have a real slow fucking time with that because I have not. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 we'll try and recap it as best we can. And you're going to fill in the massive gaps that we leave oh, okay. in all of the important stuff, I think. Um, we no, leave. we went out. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, the royal we. Um, so we had gone out and we found um, our uh, necromancer friend, or no, we had tried to find our necromancer friend again. And when we got there, we crossed paths with what's his butt, the guy who was trying to have us killed. Um, we caught him red handed trying to uh, root around and uh, look for something. And. Uh, turns out Sister Garely's one badass motherfucker, if you can believe that or not. I mean, she like she, she's got like a like an evil streak in her or something, which you wouldn't expect from like a woman of the cloth she or stabbed something. A butt. She stabbed a butt. <laughs> she stabbed a butt multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that was a more of a like a coup de gras butt stabbing. Uh, a poo de gras. Poo de gras. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said poo de gras. <laughs> 
So after we dispatch with Grace, poop de Gracie. Yeah, after we dispatch with that guy, we um, I believe we found a note. Did we find a note that directed us to a cave? So you were in um, in town when you noticed Sister Garely had something trapped under a bucket. That's right, the bucket. It was a hand. It was an undead hand with a note from the necromancer that you guys had met originally, asking for you guys to go to this uh, temple that he had recently uncovered and assist him. This is exactly how it used to work. I would not remember anything. Someone would say something. It would start to trigger a flashback. There was a hallway that had been caved in, and it kind of looped around, and we had to go back around that way. We followed the hand. Uh, the hand is now friends with me. It was, what was the pun? It was cool got, hand Luke. Cool hand Luke. <laughs> and and Palmela. No, no, no. I changed the name. Uh, oh, that's right. Like David Palmer or something like that. Is Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer. I was about to say, David Palmer's my brother in law. Oh. Oh, it'd be really awkward. <laughs> Palmer, I barely knew her. <laughs> and I'm going to change their names in every episode. So. Okay. But yeah, so we uh, we rooted around in what turned out to be, I think, a temple to Shay, or not Shay, Shar. Shar. Correct? Yes. yes, Shar. Good shit. And I actually ended up like coming back with a bitchin' tapestry that's going to look really nice in my living room back in Waterdeep. Uh huh. Oh, Waterdeep. Uh, you also from um, so the person you found in the necromancer's tent was Yarno, known as the Glass Staff, who had been working with the Red Brands, um, and he was actually a member of a uh, like a guild that. Um, What's his face? I have the the protector Silas? staff now. Yes. Yeah, but guess where guess where Sister Garley put that beforehand? Oh, Ooh. in the Ooh. closet <laughs> with oh. her other things. Uh, Sildar. So Sildar had actually been tasked to find him, um, and he had, uh, glass stuff had secretly been working with the the red brands. Um, so you guys had found him. Uh, killed him, then you went to explore the Temple of Shar to eventually find the necromancer who had been um, in his exploration of it uh, had been captured by an it was an Aleph? Aleph? Yes, that sounds right. Shadowy Uh, thing? Yeah, shadowy thing that was sort of like whispering maddening secrets. But not before we put on another bitchin' concert with Sister Garrily as our special act. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, now it's all coming back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he played the, the tambourine. How long has it been since we played... Uh, it's like six company. weeks? Mm-hmm. A little bit longer than that, maybe? So, yeah, you guys got a staff from Yarno. Do you still have the stats for that, Deese? No, can you please give it to me? It's a shield one, right? Yeah, it gives you a plus one to your AC. Just to put the name of it. I got a ring of protection. Yes. It has X charges, right? Yeah, it does have charges on it. Like 10. Yeah, so it has 10 charges. If you end up using all of the charges in a day, you have to roll a d20. And if you get a 1, then the staff shatters and is destroyed. Yeah, okay. Um, it has 10 charges. You can use one charge to cast mage armor or two charges to cast shield. And then it regains d6 plus four charges each day at dawn. You said two to do shield? Yes. And one to do mage armor. And I can name it? Uh, it's, yeah, I guess. It's just called Staff of Defense in the in the book. That's lame. That's boring. <laughs> um, I'll name it uh, Chief of Staff. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the temple, you guys found uh, a lot of undead, uh, weird shadow mirror room where you put on your concert. For some reason, you guys decided that you needed to be naked for that. Uh, um, I'm sure we had a good reason at the time. I can't recall what it is it now. Was, it was, hold on, wait, wait. What was it? Oh, it's because we were, okay, yeah, yeah. It was because, the mirrors. Yeah, yeah. It was because we wanted to be seen as pure by the god 
the goddess, right? Yes. Oh god, I missed this. Yeah, you missed. Yeah. <laughs> you missed. Them. Luckily, was... Garrily's blind and couldn't see my wang. <laughs> there was a like a carving on the wall that said "Shar sees all," uh, which was actually in reference to something else about the Shar mythology. But uh, David, they saw it and immediately interpreted that as we need to be naked and play music in front of a mirror. Well, she wanted to see like see you do. Souls. <laughs> they got to rock out with their cocks out. It's just how it goes. I'll twang out with our wang out. Um, and then, yeah, and then you guys rescued the necromancer. Uh, he gave you the uh, the ring. Uh, and then you guys headed back with with the uh, Garrily. Yep. She's going to have gonna... to say so many hail chords when she gets back to. She doesn't worship her chord. They're going to see us out with our penis out. Trick out with her dick out. Yeah. <laughs> she almost had the wine. In, she almost had the wine. In her mouth. Oh, also, Guinness. I was going to say that's oh. Guinness. I can tell from here. Also, you, you were carrying back your tapestry while we were naked before we got our clothes back. So that means it's your tapestry, right? That's right. Yeah. Our flapestry. <laughs> so you guys find Varys at the uh, Stonehill Inn. Uh, I Tell me they're wearing you, pants now. You, yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. I assume you explain what you did in some fashion to him. Yeah, in in small words, so he understands. But yes. <laughs> so I missed a naked concert again. Well, that's what you get for day drinking. <laughs> Shit. You know, that's that's what you get for not attending. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm pretty sure there'll be plenty of other chances to get naked. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look at uh at Varys and just like squint my eyes and I'm like, you know, it becomes pretty apparent to me that you have always been absent during our nakedness. Why do you think that is? Hmm? Are you hiding something? I'm comfortable with how small I am. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am very comfortable with how small you are. I'm not comfortable with this conversation, but all right. You're comfortable counting the money, but you're not comfortable counting the inches? Is that what it is? That's, ex that's exactly what it is, yes. I'm rocking a solid seven-quarter depth over here. Stack, stack seven quarters. <laughs> I'm just hiding my head because... The, the barmaid is just listening to all of this, and I'm sure she's getting an image in her head that's not going to help either of these two knuckleheads at the end of the night. I just like that you said you're hiding your head. But who's really hiding his head? It's yeah. David. They don't, they don't call me three legs for nothing, damn it. We have to change topics. We have yes. To, cause, yes. Because this one dick pony is getting annoying. Yep. That should be the name of the episode. Oh, wait, we can't use that. <laughs> we can't use that. <laughs> well, I mean, pony. yeah, but eh, maybe. maybe uh, a one Rick pony? Uh, that's, the, I don't know. I we'll, hate, we'll get there. I hate saying this, but isn't there a band called Cheap Trick? Yes. Yep. Yes. yes, there is. Yeah. They're not very good, so don't worry. They have uh, a, cheap, a guy who plays dick. a guitar that has, <laughs> two, it has two two necks on the guitar. He's like a double double-headed guitar. Mm hmm yeah, but he uses all of those extra strings to play music that's not as good as Joe Walsh. <laughs> okay. Two yeah. Right. Okay. Hey, we got some dwarves we gotta save. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Or we can just drink more beer. No, 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 no. I think you've had enough. It completely wiped you out of the last adventure, and <laughs> it's not good for the ratings. Uh. I really like these new uh, instrumental tracks we've been laying down lately. Yeah, <laughs> everything's acoustic. <laughs> <'Cause Jake's not> <laughs> <laughs> acoustic with a bagpipe. There you go. Figure that one out. No, uh, guys, I think that I can go ahead and do the lyrics for a few songs. It's not that worrisome. I, I, I've got it. Just put metal in for every fourth word and you're covered. Hello. I want to tell you this is Lichgate. I, today I'm going to be playing the throat. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that means, okay? I got to play the smilophone. 
<sighs> the lips accord. Um, I'm assuming that we have not taken a rest in between our departure from uh, Shar's temple and here, though, right? Uh, well, we should. Probably not, but you probably should, yes. How many charges do I get back on a rest, you said? Uh, oh, D6 plus that, four at dawn, not on a rest. Oh, at dawn. Oh, fucking A. That's way better than I thought it was going to be. So, you guys going to have a rest and then head out? Yep, I'm going to yes. uh, cast um, the hand spell. I don't know what spell we were using for that, Rachel. Um, man's best fiend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, casting time is an hour or ten minutes if it's already active. So it would be ten minutes. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna pick a spider this time. An undead spider. Oh, okay. Ooh, wait. Uh, how about a shadow yeah I'm going to take a shadow this time and his name will be Shad Hunter <laughs> okay alright so you guys get your rest uh, you're all elves so you just need four hours for a long rest uh, we'll see at this point it is very early morning um this is probably not a time that you guys usually are up. The hell is morning? <laughs> oh, you mean top bright. <laughs> you um, mean what happens after the concert before we go to sleep? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's the after hours glow. I thought that light minute was just time to go to sleep. <laughs> It chases you off into your bedroom. Every if we're going to be up during the day, I have to get my bandana ready. Yes. My silk eye covering, or my gauze, or whatever. Um, so you guys know that uh, Wave Echo Cave is about 15 miles away from uh, Phandalin. It is east. I ain't that far. Have you ever actually walked... 15 miles? No, but I would walk 5,000. Or is it 500? <laughs> 5, 10,000. I think, I don't know. I can't it remember. is a substantial amount of miles that he would walk and then he would walk them again. That is the lesson that he taught us in that, in that documentary song. It would probably be good to get some horses. Yeah, Rachel, it would be cool to get some horses. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had like a. I had a whole conversation about skeletal horses earlier. You. She said no. Yeah, because you wanted some sort of like weeaboo Zelda homebrew spell. It wasn't a weeaboo anything. <laughs> it said you can make a horse out of bones. It's the Zelda homebrew thing. And the first time back in February, I told you it was too homebrewy. And then you tried again. And my first response was, that's too homebrewy. Okay. I was going to build a, a bone exoskeleton <laughs> um, like uh, Dr. Octopus <laughs> and walk around on bone spider legs. Wait, in the shape of a horse? No, 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 no. I was just trying to make the argument that if I could make a horse, I could make a spider. She I wouldn't, gotcha. She wouldn't even settle on a horse. No. Nope. Okay. Fine. Oh, let's see here. So the wagon you guys had were pulled by two oxen. I mean, hell, that'll work. I can drink and drive. You can. I don't know if you should. Oh, it doesn't matter if I should. It means if I could. Rachel, I am going to make another hand, by the way. Okay. Go, go. Is this Handy Sandberg? No, no, this is Henderson Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very swab and uh, debonair hand. Yep. It's got piercing blue fingernails. 
and it laughs weird. Have, if you haven't seen Anderson Cooper laugh, like really, really laugh, it's one of the most like you will. There's nothing you can't not be happy when you watch him laugh. Like I know this is like a weird thing uh-huh. to talk about in the middle of a D D game, but if you, if you guys get a second when this episode is done, go out Google Anderson Cooper laughs about I think it's like a sausage fest or something like that. He <laughs> dies laughing, and it is it's so good that if you're in a bad mood and you watch it, you'll be in a good mood immediately. It's so fucking funny. Uh, I think to pump this game up, we should all watch it before we start playing. But that's just my vote. Whatever you guys do, whatever you guys want. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you guys can have you guys can have horses. Hey. Ooh. Are they bone horses or standard? They're regular living horses. <laughs> Wait till I'm done with it. <laughs> Renazware, they have bones on the inside. That's what counts. That is what counts. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. <laughs> As I pull a knife from my back. Put it, put it, put it away. Okay? I have to just whittle down this horse no, to the bony interior. <laughs> no, just, just put it away. Trust me. There is bonularity inside him. I get up on the horse and I crack another beer. Don't drink and drive. Uh, Varys, the I'm not, heads... I'm drinking and riding. You're, you're facing the wrong way. <laughs> the hell do you mean I'm facing the wrong way? This fluffy thing says go, right? Can yeah, I... why don't you go ahead and keep putting your head down there? That'll be fantastic. I'm going to uh, pull out that... Hello! Jug that, has, that jug that has all the holes in it. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm going to walk over to the horse and I'm going to lift the tail up and I'm like, is this where the, uh, the oil goes? <laughs> I'm having a hard time determining which one is exactly the horse's ass as I get on mine. I'll go over. So I can get off and get back up the right way. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get on the horse and then I'm going to take Henderson Cooper and place him on the top of the, the horse's head. Okay. And it's going to like hold onto the top of his skull like this. <laughs> Great. Just figured it would grab a handful of mane and hold on for dear life. Oh, yeah, that probably makes more sense. Let's do that. Okay. I mean, he could ride under the horse, but that would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> that would be weird. But I, I, could, I could really get a good speed boost when I need it. <laughs> it could be one happy horse. All right. So you guys uh, ride 15 miles east um, into the Sword Mountains where um, under Gundren's instruction is Wave Echo Cave. Um, he, re- he reiterates uh, he's very worried about his two brothers. Um, two also, brothers? Yes, he has two brothers. Two brothers. Uh, also be on the lookout for... Uh, A third brother. <laughs> Black Spider. Bring back any extra brothers you find, <laughs> and we will give you an extra 50 gold per brother. So... Um, you guys eventually make your way, uh, to, uh, the... Waveco? Waveco. To Waveco uh, Caverns. To the, the foothills where you eventually find, um, the entrance to a tunnel, uh, that leads into a large cavern, uh, supported by natural pillars of rock and containing three stalagmites. In the western part of the cave... Beneath the column of rock, there are three bedrolls and a heap of ordinary supplies. Sacks of flour, bags of salt, casks of salted meat, lanterns, flasks of lamp oil, pickaxes, shovels, and other gear. Amid the supplies, you see the body of a dwarf miner dead for at least a week. The northeastern section of the cavern has collapsed, forming a 10-foot wide, 20-foot deep pit. A sturdy hempen rope is tied off around a nearby stalagmite and dangles down the side of the pit, at the bottom of which are two rough-hewn tunnels, one leading northwest and one leading east. Hmm. I hate to see poor dwarven kids die like that. Oh, wait, wrong miner. I know, he was just a baby. Here we go again. Wrong miner. So so we have a dead miner in front of a shaft. You just went ahead and that teed that you? right up for us, didn't you? Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. She said there was one shaft that broke into two shafts. Just two shafts, right. Aw, poor fella. The guys don't come back from that shit. 
So it's a forked shaft. I'm try I'm really trying not to <laughs> I don't. No, we make this joke a lot, but yes. it is funny for us every time, and I know that's <laughs> childish. And so I'm I'm trying to aim some of this towards new aspects of childish humor that we okay. haven't targeted before, but you literally started this game off with a minor in the shaft. <laughs> this is the cave entrance. This you could have said book, anything. You could have said he was a spelunker. This is how the book describes the cave entrance. You could have said he was a spelunker, and these are some tunnels. And he's an excavator. Oh, so this is my fault. He's a sex. <laughs> yes, he's a sex excavator. <laughs> Which is an elevator that you ride down to the bottom of a whorehouse. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have one dead dwarf mm -hmm. in a well-stocked camp yes. in front of a mine. Mm -hmm. How many shovels are there? Three. I don't know what that means. I, my ability to interpret from that information is limited. <laughs> Did you mention um, any liquor in the camp? <laughs> Well, there's sacks of flour. I'm sure if you give it enough time, you could probably find a way to, you know, convert that over to grain alcohol. But I don't think we've got that kind of time today. Well, without without liquor, I don't think this is a dwarven camp. Either that or the, the dwarves left with the liquor. They could be sober. You oh, know. those bastards. Or they drink it all. No, uh, holy sin. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'd like to make an investigation check to see if I can see signs. I mean, I have a. there's a dead dwarf. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's, you know, he could have just stumbled and fell and hit his head on a rock for all I know, but I'd like to see if there's any foul play here. You were looking for signs? Well, I am the ace of this base, and let me tell you, <laughs> I saw the sign. <laughs> it opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. sign. Yeah. Uh, that is a 23 on the investigation check. Nate, don't turn around. <laughs> Why? Somebody trying to give me a healing potion? No, I, I don't want to see your heart breaking. Gotcha. I know more Ace of Base songs than I'm comfortable admitting. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you just did. No, no, I only named two, and that's ah, where I'm stopping. Gotcha. Um, so this dwarf from your investigation you can tell he died from a combination of things it looks like um heart sort disease of force damage maybe like magic missile oh my um, god as well as what looks like some sort of like, like he has these bruises on his body that are this sort of ugly sickly greenish color like they're like poisoned or something so we're so, looking for a musical enemy who uses force damage is bon jovi Juan kenobi <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's just poison. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we that don't girl, even have to make... That girl is poison. Poison, yeah. Yeah, we don't even have to make a stretch on that one. Um, all right, so so he was shot and poisoned. That seems sort of like overkill. That's bad form. Mm -hmm. Um, But... So he's dead, but yes. all the stuff is still here. So obviously this was not just some band of ruffians that came through looking to steal their wares. This is uh, probably a more deliberate death. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you, you also, looking around and, and looking at like what is still left here, um, you notice that the boots that the dwarf is wearing are very nice. And not taken. Correct. Yet. <laughs> I Wait, start really? eyeing the dwarf's <laughs> I It's times like this where I always want to be Kavir. <laughs> oh, I always want to be. Um, is there anything special about them? When you say they're nice, I mean, they're just nice boots? Or is there like, I look at the boots and I recognize them as some particular craftsmanship that helps me identify who this is or what he might do, something boot like sizes. that? Look up boot sizes. Give me um, an Arcana check. Nope, that's nope. an eight. They just—they just look really nice. They're just really nice, mm -hmm. like ostrich skin. Um, well, damn bird skin boots. Yeah. <laughs> do Do they look like they fit me? Yeah, they could probably fit you. I take them, put them in my bag. Okay. What? You know, I was, I was, gonna wait I was the wait one out, that but... had shoes in my contract. 
Well, if you want them, cuz, you can take them. I don't care. I'll put them on right now. What color are the boots? Uh, They're like a, a dark leather with gold trim. Dark leather? Like there black? you go. Like a, like a, a very dark brown. It's going to clash with my gear. Yeah, it doesn't match your belt. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to try them on because my other shoes were... He had walked a mile in them, so they were all worn down. We could each split one. We, we, we could take one of these, and then on the next pair, we okay. get one of those as well. I googled uh, what these are, and they're actually, they look pretty nice. Are they black? Yes. Are they really? Yes. Fucking A. That's the result I got. So they're, they're black leather with, like, some gold buckles. Okay. Okay, so now I'm aware that if I put them on, something mm -hmm. will probably happen because why the fuck would you just have a randomized boot generator? I don't know. I'm going to put them on. Okay. Am I cursed? Do I have uh, athlete's foot now? Your feet Click your heels off. three. <laughs> <laughs> Click you your heels three times. <laughs> oh my God, I'm back in town. Um, no, they, um, while they were originally, they fit very well in the dwarf. Um, when you put them on for a brief moment they feel like a little too short and a little too wide but then you feel the boots adjust to your feet size they're from what's it called back, from to, the back to the future <laughs> Self -lacing the, McFlies. the nike mcflies that cost thirty eight hundred dollars um so you would have to attune to these do you want okay. to do that yes i can carry an attune okay these are boots of striding and springing. Oh, David, you were supposed to have them, but you were putting them in your bag. Well, I wasn't going to put them on yet. Uh, your speed while you wear these is 30 feet, unless your walking speed is higher. Uh, your speed is not reduced if you are encumbered or wearing heavy armor. In addition, whenever you jump, you can jump three times the normal distance. What? Do you walk? I feel bad for having these boots now. I don't. I spear things in the ass. That's true. If you spider climb, you can jump up on the wall and do Spider-Man. No. I could run and jump and spear someone in the ass. See? <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm very, I'm very confused as to how your choice of footwear has anything to do with you putting something up someone's ass, but okay. Have you ever seen me jump 30 feet and then slam a fucking spear down someone's mine shaft? No, but uh, I have a feeling by the time this is over, we'll see it. <laughs> God damn, you get one of those with a shield. Okay, can Different you send game. me the, the description on this so I can yeah. type it out exactly? Mm -hmm. Thank you. d -walk, I think it's only fair that you get the next pair of boots. Cheers. <laughs> Rachel's going to be like, these boots give you all of the musical talent in the world and also give you a hand job whenever you put them on. <laughs> like, God damn it. I didn't know there was HJBs coming. <laughs> but they don't function when you're drunk, so you're fucked. It's actually I don't want part a pair of, of HJBs. It's like part of the condition. <laughs> Only works if you don't have whiskey dick. <laughs> Boy, isn't that always the condition, though, Nate? Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I've literally yelled at it in the mirror. You better get your shit together! <laughs> <laughs> Punch it like huh? a defibrillator. <laughs> Get going. Three, two, clear. Oh my God. Okay. <sighs> better Rachel, go get yourself another. You better go get yourself another Guinness. <laughs> Rachel, I'm sorry. We need to. No, you're not. Don't uh, lie to me. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. It was funny watching watching Rachel get upset by stuff. <laughs> All right, so you have your magic boots. Um, you guys can see down this pit, uh, there are a couple of tunnels. You said one went to the northeast? Yes, and one goes to the... No, I'm sorry. No, one goes to the northwest and one goes to the east. Hmm. Well, 
Uh, is there any indication, uh, investigation check to see if we see footprints? Um, you would need to climb down the rope to get a better look. Oh, so we actually have to go down mm -hmm. before, okay. Oh, shit. Renazmir, how do you feel like climbing down a rope? Way ahead of you. And I'm going <laughs> to grab the rope and then uh, I'm trying to think if I want to start this game off with a really serious injury. <laughs> how far down is the hole? Uh, it is 20 foot deep. That's not that bad. No. I'm just going to jump down the hole. Okay. I'm going to say way ahead of you. All right. Let me roll your bludgeoning damage. 1d6. Uh, it's 1d6 per 10 feet. Yeah, no, after the first 10. Isn't it? Because that's not what the book says. Uh, that's not always how we've played it. I thought it was the first 10. Okay. Okay. All right. You get three bludgeoning damage. I feel bludgeoned. <laughs> there, there was a rope for that, but okay. No worries. I'm also going to make sure that I don't let Varus know that this is a hempen rope. <laughs> Smoke for, rope. For obvious reasons. <laughs> That's why I didn't use the rope. I don't touch this stuff. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, what do you see down there? I probably sent the wrong person to do the scouting, but... Uh, why? <laughs> I don't know. What, what's your investigation? Is it good? Uh... <laughs> that's that's my point. Shut up, I'll roll it. Shut okay. <laughs> you could get a twenty. Yeah, you could. never I know. A, I got a plus four to investigate. So. Uh, he has more okay. than me. That's not bad. Ten. Um, you can't. You don't see that either of these have been taken recently. There are two tunnels. <laughs> mm-hmm. And. Uh, they diverge in a, uh, in a cavern. And that has made all the difference. <laughs> <sighs> all right. Well, Varys looks like we're going down the hole. Wow. He's coming on to you really strong. <laughs> looks like we're down going the... down the I, hole. I, I, hand, I, hand, I hand him the rope. <laughs> Tie me up first. I'm going to resist. This rope smells nice. That just that don't just ignore it. Just climb down it. All right, all right. Give me Hold my beer. Yeah, I have beer in my beer. All oh right. yes, priorities, please. <laughs> <laughs> that is a. That is a sixteen. Okay, you managed to make it down. Woo! Get to the bottom. Pop another beer. How do we change our name in our settings? Everyone else has a cool name. Right, right. Click on your. There's the three little dots at the top of your window. Yeah. Uh, Virian, are you climbing down? Uh, yes. Give me an Cause, athletics check. Cause I wasn't smart enough to take Featherfall. Uh, you want an athletics? Yes. Could we make it something else? Nope. Well, fuck. I don't have a keyboard. So here we go. Everybody, laugh. No, I catch you! Holy hey, shit, that was awesome! Make it down. Yeah, it's a nineteen. I didn't have to catch you. Good Jeez. thing too, because I would have shattered my fucking hips if I fell. <laughs> Jeez, I it's can okay. rename you if you'd like. Uh, yeah, but you're gonna do it something mean. Fine, then I won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna, she's gonna need another beer. And then she's gonna compliment me and my name change. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel got real drunk one time and was the nicest person I've ever talked to. That's what life. that's what happens when I get drunk. I get really ditzy and I get really nice. <laughs> so what you're saying is by the end of this game we are going to have skeleton horses. <laughs> <laughs> All of you guys get a skeleton horse. You deserve it because you work so hard. Yes. <laughs> Man. Man, she slips into that way too easy. <laughs> I know she was, she was trying to make a joke about being nice, but I heard it sarcastically. Like, I literally, yeah. everything that comes to me, through me, past me is sarcastic. So there's no way. She was being genuine there, and I was like, this bitch. And I was like, she's pretty funny. <laughs> trying to be funny. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, I try. I try sometimes. 
All right. Um, so the three of you are down in the pit. Uh, there are two tunnels. You don't really see any sort of like tread difference between them. If I were a dwarf, which way would I go? Probably both ways. <laughs> <laughs> I already go both ways. I'm talking about dwarf here. So probably uh, both ways slightly slower. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? When in doubt, go right. Um, Which way are you facing? Uh, I assume I'm facing north, which would allow me to see that there's a tunnel slightly to my left and one that makes a hard right. Um, I'd say probably start by venturing down the uh, tunnel to the right. Go east. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. Sorry, I muted myself so I could do that, and then I opened my book and I hit the unmute button with the book. That was great. I, I was um I was playing D and D in Zoom with my other group the other day, and um I had been I'd been drinking Dr Pepper, so I had to burp, and one of my players was talking, so I went to mute myself so I could burp, but my brain mixed it up, and I muted him, and then I just burped directly into my microphone. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'll I'll give you what I'll give you what even better the other night we were playing and Michael decided that after his turn was over he was just gonna lean back in his chair and he thought he muted himself <laughs> and he ripped like a nine second fart oh sitting there. My God. And, but but totally totally no sold it, like nothing was going on, just kinda sat back there and just let it go without any kind of reaction. Oh, no. And so we just all kinda sat there and stared, it took about five seconds like I'm not muted, am I? <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. I love that humans can tell just by like expression on people's face, yeah. even if they're trying to hide it. It's just like I'm not muted. Uh, all right, so we've come down, and now we are headed eastward. What do we see as we head east? So you move through this tunnel it's about um 10 15 feet before it opens up a little bit uh there are no lanterns there's no light source within here but you're all elves with dark vision well, and, I'll also, and, and i'll also cast well actually wait can i cast light did i take light no i didn't because i'm an idiot why would you cast light i don't know <laughs> you all have night vision i know i figured it would be helpful but fine but i didn't take why it why would anyways. it be helpful <laughs> it would <just> blind me <laughs> So, um, ahead of it would you, it literally be the opposite of helpful. Uh, ahead of you to the east, um, there's well, there's a um, a tunnel that heads north, but also east of you guys. Um, you can see that there are many tunnels that intersect at this natural thirty foot high cavern. The walls are the walls are carved with simple reliefs showing dwarf and no miners hard at work. Below right. them, nearly two dozen skeletons in rusted scraps of armor are scattered across the cavern floor. Some are dwarf skeletons, while others are orc remains. Half a dozen large brass lanterns stand in niches or on ledges around the cavern, but none are lit. Oh my god, it's like a treasure trove down here. <laughs> I'm going to start racking up bones. Okay. Uh, pick, like, take my favorite skull shapes and different arm and rib cage bones and be like oh my god it's like it's like going into a junkyard <laughs> so Renazmir immediately goes oh, and then run, runs forward to start picking through the uh the skeletons and Henderson uh, Cooper is running around like bringing me like a jawbone I'm like oh that's a good one <laughs> uh Renazmir what is your passive perception just it's not gonna be good <laughs> Okay. It's nine, I think. Okay. Um, so. It's eight plus one for my stat, and then plus uh, proficiency if I'm trained in it, right? Yes. It's so ten nine. plus. I believe it's ten plus your stat. Is it ten? Oh, is it ten? Oh, yeah. Yeah, ten. Oh, spell DC is eight, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Spell DC is eight. Sorry, I, I have like 30 game systems in my head, and I'm try I, I try to remember. No worries. Okay. 
Yeah, so then I have an 11. Okay, so you are completely surprised as this uh, sort of mosquito bat looking creature kind of swoops down and it goes to almost dive bomb you, but you actually in like a cartoon way, like like bend down at the waist to like pick up a skull at just that moment and it like ah. shoots past you. Um, but the rest of them that are on the ceiling are all going to attack. So why don't we roll for initiative? Oh boy. Oh shit. Um, that is... 16. 23. Whoa. Virian? 16 with a 2 modifier. 16 with a 4 modifier. Okay. You think that would work the opposite way, right? Like, if if he has a, a lower modifier, that means technically he was more prepared. Yeah, because they had the higher roll. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I don't know, but I guess maybe it's a natural... if. Since they both react to the same way, then other minutia based into decks might have played a part in it. Yeah. Maybe that makes more sense. I don't know. <laughs> That's my inner lawyer. <laughs> I'm willing to argue either side. Just tell me which one's paying me. Yep. Uh, so, Varys, you're up first. Um, so you catch sight of this. Uh, it's a sturge. Um, you see it like swoop down and you kind of look up and you can see there are uh, close to a dozen more on the, the ceiling and they're all getting ready to, to oh, swarm you guys. Shit. It's a funeral sturge. Is there a big armored motherfucker with a shield I can hide behind? Uh, no. He all is... Right. Well, Mel isn't armored. I know. No. That princess uh, is in a different princess kingdom. <laughs> Uh, the closest you guys have had to someone armored this game would be uh, Sister Garely. Told you she's a hey, badass hey. motherfucker. Is there? Yeah, a, she was also a rock I can hide behind. Uh, yeah, there's there's um, stalagmites kind of scattered around the the cavern. Take refuge behind the rock. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna. Moved behind a stalag might fuck. Alright, I'm gonna pull up my longbow and try to pop one. Okay. They stalag might be giants. The stalag mighty mighty boss stones. Eighteen. <laughs> eighteen more? Alright. Alright, alright, alright. That is a seven. Okay. Um, you kill it. It just sort of like explodes in midair as it was starting to swoop down. Oh, shit! They blow like firecrackers. <laughs> Anything else, Varys? I sip my beer. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Another one will swoop down and attack for Nazmir. Does a 21 hit you, Renazmir? You know it does. Okay. I just wanted you to say it. <laughs> hate fairy. <laughs> oh, hate... wait, wait, wait. You said a 21? Uh-huh. A shield will automatically block, right? No, it gives you a certain plus to your AC. Okay, hold on. Okay. I don't think it's going to be enough. Most shields are normally two. Hey, wait a minute. Until the start of the next turn, you have plus five bonus to AC. That's 16 plus five. It's 21. Mm-hmm. That still hits, though, right? Ty is good with the attacker. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just not happy. Okay. Ow! Um, so, let's see here. So, you take four piercing damage, and it attaches itself to you. Oh, that might be really bad for him. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, um, he's got all of the SCDs now. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Another one will swoop down and go after Virian. Virian, does a 15 hit you? Yes. Okay. You take 
seven piercing damage. Motherfucker. And it attaches to you. This one will go after Varys. If it's looking for blood, it's going to have to suck awfully hard to find some. <laughs> uh, Varys, does a ten hit you? Yes. A ten hits you? No, God, no. Okay. I have a fifteen. All right. Uh, Renazmir, your turn. Uh, I'm going to life tap. Okay. As an action, you make a melee spell attack against a living creature. Dealing necrotic damage, you go to 1d8 plus your charisma modifier on a hit. He's not moving, though. He's stuck in me, so grabbing him seems simple enough, right? Um, yeah, I'll let you make... You have to roll an attack. Okay. Uh, so I'll make you... You can roll it with the... Oh, okay. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> All right. 11. So you go to... Like, do you, like, slap at it? Do you grab it? Yeah, I'm I'm going to just... As, he's stuck stuck in me, and it's like, thump, and I'm like, oh, you're going to regret this. And then I just slowly put my hand around it and close. <laughs> and then just drain the shit out of it. Okay. And I get all of the blood that he took plus some back. <laughs> it, like, it has, like, this really gross kind of soft, squishy body, and it just, like, immediately kind of like withers away and dies in your hands. Okay. Well, then I'm going to gain 11 hit points. Okay. And that will put me in bonus hit points. Thing. Does it go into... Is it temporary hit points? Yeah. Okay. Um, if any drain, the total number of damage comes back to me as life. Uh, and if it goes over my hit points on this one particular drain, mm -hmm. that becomes my capped hit points. Oh, okay until uh, I lose those temp first. Okay. Uh, Alright, Virian, it is your turn. So you have one attached to you. <clears throat> right. Um, and how many total are there right now? Uh, there are... Including the one attached to you, eight. Eight. Yes. Holy shit. Uh, is it safe to assume that given the size of the room that they all sit currently within a 20 foot cube? Um, you could, um, the one that's attached to you wouldn't be within 20 feet of the others. Uh, but you could get quite a few that are still kind of coming down, um, in a 20 foot cube. We'll say you could get four of them. Four of them. Hmm. Is it worth that now? Or is it worth trying to get rid of the one that's on me? Uh, you know what? Let's let's deal with the one that's on me. Um, I can't. I guess I'm just going to be able to stab it since it's on me. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's see how that works. Uh, that's a 19 to hit. That will hit. The dagger and damage. Three points of damage. Huzzah! That is enough to kill it. Okay, and then as a bonus action, I'm going to cast a first level healing word on myself. Okay. Is that a bard spell or a sorcerer spell? Uh, that is a... Hmm. Bard spell. Okay. Yep, healing word is a bard spell. All right, so that healed me for four points of damage, which takes me back up to 17. All right, anything else? Uh, is there a place for me to move and take cover? Um, there's some uh, stalactites or stalagmites on the ground. Okay, um, so I can, I can move to one without provoking an attack or... Yeah. Okay, uh, I will move to a, uh, I'll move to an off-the-side area and take cover. Um, all right, uh, another one of these Sturges will swoop down and go after Varys. Varys does a 19 hit you. I hope you find joy in your heart. I do find joy in my heart. You take seven piercing damage and it's attached to you. This shit's payback for the first episode of Dragon Eyes. I fucking <laughs> know it. There's a... Bard, I don't know if it's out yet or if it's the ne if it's like one of the next two Bard Company episodes coming out, but you guys get attacked by 
something and David is giving me a hard time. And then it's the monsters trying to go, it attacks Varys. <laughs> David's like, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> She's had it out for me since fucking episode one. <laughs> that shit. <laughs> uh, another one will swoop down and go after Renazmir. Renazmir does a 16 hit you. No, because of your shield? Yeah, I'm going to put up the shield. Actually, no, you it know should, what? It should still have... Well, you put up your shield, so... Oh, wait, no, no you never I cast didn't. it. Okay. No, no. All right. Um, okay. So it... Well, five piercing damage. Okay. And it is attached to you. Uh, another one is going to swoop down after Virian. Virian doesn't 18 hit you. Yes. Okay. You take six piercing damage and you have one attached to you. Uh, another one will swoop down and go after Varys. Varys, I don't think a 10 hits you. Oh, thank God. There is a God. Uh, Renazmir. Does a 14 hit you? Nope. Okay. And Virian, not 20. I may be dead. Uh, what, what you do to piss off, teacher? You take eight piercing damage. And so now you have two attached to you. You probably want to take care of these. Yeah. Varys, so. your turn. About how bad does my manager look in shape wise? Uh, probably pretty bad. Well, I can shit. take care of him. No worries. You got him? Mm -hmm. Alright. Then uh, I'll stab this motherfucker that's on me. Okay. Pull an arrow out and stab it with an arrow. Alright, give me an attack. That is a 13. Plus, would an arrow be finesse or strength? <laughs> what I'm using as a melee. Mm. Well, probably finesse, but that's just because I have a 19 in dex. We'll see because because you are proficient in arrows. I'll let you use it as a finesse weapon. All right, so that's a 17 to strike that little fucker. That will hit. All right. Um, Misty, and what would you call damage of an arrow <laughs> by uh, itself? I'll say it's a D4. Alright. Plus your dex modifier. That's a damage from an arrow. I'm just going to stab fuckers with arrows from now on. You kill it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it is dead. Do you want to do anything else, Varys? I give Bardic Inspiration to Varen. Okay. Uh, this one, this one's not attached to anyone. Uh, this one will go after Renazmir. Uh, Renazmir does a 22 hit you. You know it does. I do know it does. Six piercing damage. Okay. So you have two attached to you now. It is your turn. Okie doke. I am trying to decide how I want to do this. Uh, Nate, how low are you? I have... three points of health right now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say, just go with it. And I'm going to tell Henderson Cooper... To go leap onto uh, Nate. Okay. <laughs> he is going to grab. You're not wearing a hat or anything, right? No. Oh, he's just going to grab you around the throat. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, and then he's just going to like tap on your neck to let you know you're okay. Just hold. He's going to hold on. Is he checking my <laughs> pulse? David yeah. Carradine style, bro. David Carradine. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not opposed to a little light choking, but you know. Okay, I'm going. Usually, to I use... get dinner first.
Once again, we want to thank you guys for listening to Freelance Heroism. We hope you're having just as much fun listening as we are playing. Visit us at facebook.com slash freelance heroism and leave us a like. If you'd like to see our adventures in comic form, the professional illustrates our misadventures and more at 1d4rounds.com. If you're interested in supporting us, consider donating. We're at patreon.com slash freelance underscore heroism. Keep an eye out for rewards as we add them. Our cast includes me, Dees Cassius, as Renazmir on lead guitar, David Walker as Varus on drums, Jake Sippel as Mellifluor with lead vocals, and Nathan Lett as Virian Herpator, Lich Gate's executive talent agent. And let's not forget, last but not least, our suffering DM, Rachel Moore. Questions or comments? Send an email to freelanceheroismpodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week. Until then, the invoice is in the mail. <laughs> I have no idea what episode this is. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> you edit them. I record them months ahead of time, and then I don't know which one we're getting until... <laughs> We you recorded know. this episode in like 2020. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Me saying this is my favorite episode might have panned out poorly. <laughs> might have panned out bad. You know what? I'm sure it's going to be fine. Rachel does a bang up job. Thank you. <laughs>